Aboard the International Space Station, Expedition 24 flight engineers Doug Wheelock, Tracy Caldwell Dyson, and Shannon Walker fielded questions about life and work in space from KTRH Radio in Houston and the Houston Chronicle during a series of in-flight interviews on July 6th. Walker, who launched to the station June 16th on a Russian Soyuz rocket, is the first native-born Houstonian to fly in space. All right, excellent. Uh, Shannon Walker, uh, you and you have a, 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 a I was going to say a fellow woman aboard. <laughs> that doesn't quite work, does it? <laughs> Flight engineer Tracy Caldwell Dyson with you as well. H has it become a, kind of a, a click there between the men and the women yet? Um, no, I wouldn't say it's a, a click at all. We all work together very well. Douglas Wheelock, I have to know, what was it like for all of you to spend Independence Day in space? Well, it, it was a it was really a great treat. Uh, of course, it was a, it was a busy day for us because it was the day that our Progress Resupply uh, ship docked uh, that day on their uh, second attempt, and so it was a it was a great day for us, a very successful day, and it was um, it was uh, actually very nostalgic for me. It was uh, we got to spend some time with our Russian uh, partners and uh, just celebrating mm -hmm. our, our independence. Uh, in the U.S. and uh, and um, they were uh, they celebrated with us and it was uh, it was quite a quite an awesome moment to look down, uh, on our world and and understand that uh, we have no borders from this uh, vantage point and uh, it was uh, just a great uh, day of celebration. Okay, I have to know if you were able to see any of the fireworks from your vantage point up in space. Unfortunately, no, we could not see any of the fireworks. Shannon, you were the first Houston native to launch into space. I'm guessing you took some special mementos with you. I did. I have a few mementos um, from Houston. I have a... Um, a key from the city of Houston. I have a little plaque from Rice University, which is my alma mater, and then I also have a um, a poster from the University of Houston, where my father taught for many, many years. What is uh, the, the the real mission that you are particularly following there, Shannon? Is, is this? Uh, I guess it's all laid out in advance. What what exactly are you doing while you're on board uh, the space station? Well, during, during the six months that uh, I'll be here, we actually have, all of us have a variety of jobs, and it just depends on um, what the needs of the ground are. We do everything from science, lots of different kinds of science, to maintenance and repairs. Um, so I can't tell you exactly one particular thing that I'm doing because we're doing lots of different things while we're here. Tracy Caldwell Dyson to you. Um, while the astronauts there will be present for the end of the shuttle program, this has got to be a busy time for you, but yet bittersweet and nostalgic at the same time, is it not? Yeah, I have to say, um, it, it, it's been busy since I got here uh, about three months ago, and um, it's just now starting to kind of even out as we uh, um, look forward to our uh, our spacewalks and some robotic arm operations, and uh, there will be a shuttle coming after I leave. Um, and from that respect, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be bittersweet to leave the space station, which is just a, uh, an amazing vehicle and in a in a most uh, miraculous place, uh, to be honest. Uh, but then to um, to see uh, our shuttles um, make their last flights to uh, to space and back, uh, it uh, it brings a lot of joy knowing that. Uh, They've been so successful, and they've got us to where we are now. But uh, we definitely are going to miss uh, such an awesome, incredible vehicle. Tracy, I, I'd like to know what you think at this point will be your most important memory from your experiences on the space station. Wow. Um, that is a hard one. Uh, to date, I guess my uh, 
one of one of the most profound uh, memories I have is when uh, we said goodbye to our uh, Expedition 23 crewmates as they uh, made their way back to Mother Earth, and the three uh, crew, the three of us that flew up here together, um, Alexander and Michal and myself, were left alone on the space station uh, for about two weeks before my Expedition 24 crewmates arrived, and I remember uh, thinking one night that there were only three people in space, and I was one of them, and that was uh, that was a pretty uh, a pretty emotional moment for me. Um, but I hope that uh, those memories aren't over yet. We still got a little bit of time left, uh, uh, a half a, an increment, three months to go, and a spacewalk to look forward to, and um, just a lot of fun uh, with my crewmates here. Doug Wheelock, like I have to ask you pretty much the same thing. If you have a memory that you would like to bring back with you, has it already been made? Are you still waiting for the ultimate memory? Well, uh, uh, there are surprises that wait around each corner while you're here in space, and so uh, uh, we had one of those this weekend and when we had to uh, try again uh, to redock this vehicle. And so um, each day is, is sort of magical in itself up here. Um, uh, from the, the subsystems on the space station to uh, visiting vehicles and things and doing a spacewalk has its own challenges and its own uh, uh, real personal memories uh, as we get to experience that next month. Uh, but um, I, think, uh, I think it's j just the, the collection of, uh, of daily memories up here that uh, I'm trying to keep a journal and, and just kind of uh, catalog those things uh, for, uh, that I can tell my grandkids one day. Shannon Walker, I'd like to ask if there's any message that you would like to convey to your, uh, I, I guess I would say, classmates uh, at uh, Westbury High School, where you attended here in Houston. What would you like to say to those kids, who, some of whom may be looking forward to a career like yours? Well, I certainly hope that some of them will be looking forward to a career like mine. I would say to the kids, uh, persevere. Life gives you a lot of challenges, but uh, if you work hard, you can overcome just about any challenge or obstacle in your path. And um, always pursue your dreams. Um, maintain maintain awareness of what you want out of life and always work towards it. it. It may not always be easy, but you can get where you want to be. Tracy Dyson, to you, if you could make one comment to the White House, the Bush administration, don't want to take this political, that is for sure. But if you could ask, what is in store for this program? You don't want to be in the, dri in the passenger seat. You want to stay in the driver's seat. What would be your pitch to keep our space program moving forward? Oh, to put it in a nutshell, I, I mean, look at look at what we've done, uh, and I'm not just talking about we NASA. I'm talking about uh, we as a, a world. We um, we're a collective country. Um, we have put men on the moon. We have um, we have brought things back to Earth uh, as a result of developing technologies to get us here into space. We've built this incredible space station, and it wasn't alone. We did it with our uh, partner nations, uh, Russia, Japan. Uh, Europe, all over the world, and we've brought them together here in space. We assembled this this incredible vehicle in space, and um, gosh, if that isn't worth continuing, um, then I don't know what is. So I would say uh, to the White House and our president that um, invest in our future, because um, we've got a lot, of, a lot of kids out there that are looking forward to getting here and to getting us beyond, and we can't let them down. Shannon Walker, back to you. A very quick answer because we're almost out of time. What what exactly would do you think that the, the space program will be okay without the shuttle? I think the space program will have uh, different challenges without the shuttle. We've certainly lost um, a, a capability, at least in the short term, to um, haul large amounts of cargo, massive amounts of cargo into space, and we've lost the capability to bring lots of hardware home, and that's going to present different challenges for us to maintain and, and work on the space station. To Tracy Caldwell Dyson, Shannon Walker, Doug Wheelock, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us, and safe journey. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR that concludes the KTRH portion of the event.
please stand by for a voice check from the Houston Chronicle. Station, this is the Houston Chronicle. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear on the station. Well, great. Good morning. Um, I guess, uh, first of all, uh, question for Shannon, maybe talk about your feelings when you first reached the station. Were you relieved to be out of the Soyuz capsule, or was it, were there other feelings going through your mind? Oh, there were a lot of feelings going through my mind. I was um, very excited to be on the station after having uh, worked on the ground for so many years, watching uh, the station being assembled and, and working to maintain it and, and get it up and running. It was just so incredibly exciting to actually be here to live on it. Um, the Soyuz is a wonderful spacecraft, but it is small, so it was nice to have a little bit more space to move around in. And, and Doug, I guess it's been almost three years since you were last at the station. How has it changed since then? It, the, the changes have been incredible. We, um, on STS-120 back in 2007, we brought up the Node 2, and so I was thinking about it the other day, and we were actually docked on the uh, shuttle Discovery to the front the front end of the lab at that time, and now there's so there's so much usable uh, volume uh, in laboratories forward of the lab now that it's just the uh, the U.S. segment has literally doubled in size or even gr even greater, and so um, it's a tremendous uh, uh, it's a tremendous vehicle and it's uh, it looks so much different as we're approaching it now uh, as I approached it uh, back uh, three years ago. All the solar arrays are installed now and um, it's a fantastic flying machine. And, and Tracy, maybe talk a little bit about what it's like to have another woman on the station at the same time. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it is nice because now I'm not the only one that uh, gets uh, the finger pointed at them when there's long hair stuck in someone's food or in their face. It, no, it's a delight to have Shannon up here and to, uh, uh, to we're, we're kindred spirits and we're not really sure if that's because we're both female or just because we're a lot alike, but um, uh, it is nice and uh, uh, a pleasant change to, uh, to have a lady on board with me. Yeah. Hey, so it's already been an active uh, Atlantic hurricane season down here. Did anyone uh, perchance see Hurricane Alex from space? Our own Alexander did, actually. Uh, the commander of the space station uh, was trying desperately to get pictures of um, the hurricane and out his uh, crew quarter window. And uh, much to his, uh, <laughs> um, I guess, disappointment, you could say, in, a, in, a, um, in one light, that he was, uh, he said that it looked mainly like a, uh, a block of clouds, like a, um, a, a blanket of clouds. And you couldn't really make out the structure too well of the hurricane. Uh, unfortunately, I think he's going to have other opportunities in the coming months. Um, what about the oil spill? Have any of you seen that from space, and, and how is that going to make you feel? Of course, it's it's just tragic, uh, uh, the bits of news that we get up here. I was able to look out uh, yesterday and uh, out of the service module windows in the Russian segment, and we saw a little bit of the... Um, of the oil from uh, stretching from uh, uh, New Orleans over to the um, uh, to the uh, western coast of uh, well Alabama, uh, the Gulf Shores area, and um, just tragic. And, and and another day, I saw some of the fires that were burning, uh, that they had burning off some of the oil uh, in the middle of the Gulf. Uh, I saw that as well, and um, just tragic. And uh, we hope uh, and pray that uh, we're able to get a get the leak stopped. Your, the blog you've been writing has been uh, has, there's been a lot of really good response to that from readers. So thank you for doing that. I, I wanted to ask you what it's like to uh, access the internet from space. Is that challenging? You know, that's kind of funny you ask. Um, it is a little bit challenging, and to be honest, to date, I have not um, done that yet. It takes a, quite a bit of time to access the Internet, and our connection to the ground is is definitely not a broadband connection. So um, because I'm so busy during the day, I have not um, had the opportunity to access the Internet. But it's good to hear that people are enjoying the blog, and I will, I will definitely keep writing. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Tracy, I wanted to ask you sort of about as the, the construction winds up and, and you really sort of get into operational phase with the, the space station, maybe talk a little bit about 
uh, maybe one of the scientific experiments that you're working on or that you're familiar with that, that you think is, is interesting and has some potential for some interesting results? Well, I'll have to say that um, there's a lot of interesting science going on up here. and. Uh, right now, we're all involved in, in uh, certain aspects of um, the human research and development. We um, uh, are taking uh, blood and urine samples um, based off of a um, nutritional study that we're doing to help understand the effects of um, potassium on uh, bone loss. Um, like I said, we ourselves are subjects, and um, there was, there's much um, work that we do on the ground prior to launching, actually, that uh, goes into the study, as well as when we when we come back home. So that's kind of ongoing. Um, and as Shannon mentioned before, we, we're doing various um, experiments up here on a daily basis. And um, I might be working one day on, on this one particular experiment, and then uh, Doug or Shannon will be coming after me to finish it up. Um, but one that I'm consistent with uh, recently is uh, one that is called coarsening, um, and it involves um, two metal alloys that are um, uh, together, in a, and we're looking at combustion of these particles, Sorry. and um, to see, to, to understand um, better uh, how uh, combustion works in, in rocket engines and, and to see uh, how we can improve on that system. And really, I am not the brain of, of the operation. I am really just the hands-on uh, technician, if you will. I'm the one that puts the experiment together up here, um, the hardware pieces, and I flip the switches and uh, tell the ground what I see. It's really the, the brains behind it all are the people that are uh, in, on the ground, uh, the, the principal investigators, the scientists who dreamed up these experiments, and they're the ones that uh, can speak beautifully about their experiments, all we can really uh, shed light on are uh, the fantastic setups that we uh, perform up here. Well, that, that was pretty modest. Thank you. Um, Shannon, aside from your family, what, what do you miss most so far about uh, being away from Houston uh, and, and sort of unable to reach it? That's a good question. I think um, it would probably be all the wonderful restaurants that we have in Houston. Uh, Houston's such a fantastic restaurant town, and just the uh, variety in food and being able to go out and get, um, you know, Mexican one night and Indian food the next night and uh, Thai food. Uh, we have a lot of variety on orbit, but it's just not quite the same. I can imagine. Um, Doug, let's talk a little bit about the difference of, of visiting, being a visitor to the space station um, for a couple of weeks on the, the shuttle and, and actually living now on the station for six months. Is it, is, talk about the differences in those experiences. Well, he, huge, huge, huge difference. Uh, and when I was thinking about this, and Tracy and I are getting ready to do a spacewalk in a, in about a month, and um, and one of the one of the uh, biggest things that uh, when you're just visiting on a shuttle, you don't have much time uh, to learn how to control your body, whether it's floating around inside of the station or working on the outside of the station. It's uh, it's very much a uh, a work. Uh, uh, it's an art rather than a science, uh, uh, controlling your body positioning, and, uh, and and your accelerations and things on on your on your body. And so, so um, that's that's uh, one of the first things I've noticed that we've gotten a lot of practice uh, doing that. And I think that will certainly make a uh, an EVA a spacewalk a little. Uh, we'll have a little more finesse in that respect. Um, the other is uh, is just sort of pacing yourself. Um, the shuttle flights tend to be uh, kind of a sprint and uh, very, very packed days and, um, and very little margin for, uh, uh, for timeline uh, uh, delays. And so, and the station is, uh, is again, a tight, tightly packed schedule, but we run it more like a laboratory. And so, and so there's, a, there's a little bit of, um, of uh, uh, discretion you can use in how, uh, when you uh, start and begin, or begin and end uh, uh, your, your daily tasks. So, so it's, uh, it's more of a, um, a, it's, it's more of, a um, of a life up here rather than uh, just, a, just an all out sprint. I see a final and a final quick question for Shannon. What kind of what's been the biggest surprise so far that you maybe not didn't expect, uh, but but it found now that you're in space. That's a good question. I'm not sure I really have an answer for you. Um, every day brings new surprises and new challenges, but uh, nothing really stands out. It's just the wonder of learning how to to live in space. 
I see. Well, thank you very much this morning. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.